Hey everyone, I'm Arwazi. Welcome back to some more XCOM enemy within the long war. So, we got the transport landing site. That's going to be fun. But before I get started, I need to wait for the Aegis armor and the new cyber suit. I'm not doing this mission without that. Especially without the new cyber suit. Oh great, we got abductions at the same time. Well, I guess we'll do that after the landing site. There we go, there's the cyber suit. Now we can do the landing site. It's still not going to be easy, but we definitely need our mech trooper for this. And now, with the new cyber suit, I can actually use both the kinetic strike module and the flamethrower at the same time. That's one of the reasons why I wanted it ASAP. So, autoloader and alloy belt. Now, this is going to be an interesting mission. Let's clear all of this and decide what's going to be on the squad. I'll keep the scout actually and I'll keep Girard. Right, because she has Sci Inspiration and Girard has Mind Fray. That's a pretty good combo actually. And Bella is fatigued anyway, I can't bring her. Okay, who's going to be our officer then? Let's see, we can get a medic officer, we can get Sam. Well, I think I prefer Sam, seeing how I'm bringing Girard. Alright, Sam is coming. Now, Kerry is unfortunately fatigued. I do have a sergeant rank assault. Which is not nearly as good as master sergeant assault, obviously. But she does have rapid fire. And I got the scatter blaster. So that makes sense. We also need at least one gunner, preferably two gunners. I'll need to bring a specialist gunner. Or a fatigued gunner, if I want to have two gunners. I guess I'll bring a specialist gunner then. Okay, one more person. What do we actually need? More firepower, basically. Maybe a rocketeer? Or maybe a sniper? Yeah, sniper actually. So, Hariri. That's our squad. I could replace a gunner with a rocketeer, but... I think I prefer to use a gunner, even a specialist gunner. Because that way I can use my Gatling Pulser. Alright, so alloy bipod and scope. That way she will have 90 aim. Since the bipod bonus isn't included here. Yeah, that's pretty good. And phalanx armor. I don't have enough carapace armor for everyone. But I think I can give it to everyone except Hariri. And Hariri can use phalanx armor, I suppose. Not much point using Kestrel armor for this mission. It won't be very useful during this mission specifically. Okay, next up, Kostya. Carapace armor, pulse auto blaster, and preferably scope. He's the only soldier on this squad with heat ammo. He also has resilience, so that's nice. And he will need that. With 13 hit points and resilience, he can tank one direct hit from pretty much any alien type. And I like that. Okay, each is armor for our assault. And possibly kiting plating on top of that. And that will be what, 16 hit points? Yep. Okay, that's pretty good. I don't have the blaster yet, as in the better pistol. But I'm not going to wait for that, that's for sure. I'm not going to bother with an arc thrower for this mission. If I want to capture aliens, we can do that during some easier missions, not this one. So, cutting plating and what? Flashbang grenade? Actually, more ammo. Because the scatter blaster only has free ammo. With extra ammo, I can use rapid fire two turns in a row. Without having to reload. Okay, I like that. So next up, Sam. No changes here other than the weapon. Actually, armor. Carapace armor. Yeah, I have enough carapace armor. For everyone. Actually, no, I don't. I need one more phalanx armor on someone else. But who? The gunner? I can use phalanx armor and kiting plating. That's also not a bad idea. Actually, what if I use phalanx armor and kiting plating on the scout? That's 11 hit points. No, that's too low for a scout. Right. 
pulse rifle and chem grenades okay so that's done and Girar. wait no i do have enough carapace armor for everyone because Girar is already using carapace armor okay don't have to worry about that then so pulse rifle his aim is not that amazing but pulse rifle is still much better than laser rifle i think we're ready now i'm just checking oh yeah right hariri he needs a proper weapon so Paul sniper rifle yeah i'm not going to use casual armor for this mission not necessary and i can give him a scope pistol because he actually has gunslinger so that might be useful at some point and he doesn't have snapshot unfortunately so any more changes i don't have a lot of flashbang grenades but it will have to be enough I got alloy plating that I didn't use, but I don't think I want to use that. I'm not replacing the barrel scanner, I need a barrel scanner for this mission. And our scout doesn't have that, does she? No. Well, I think this is good enough. This is a fairly strong squad. So it should be fine, but this will be a very long mission. And probably a pretty tough one. Let's go then! This will almost definitely be a two-parter, but we'll see. And we will probably have some really nasty aliens. We might have some huge alien types. We might get sectopods in here. I didn't actually have any sectopods yet on a regular mission. We had one during base defense, but that's a special case. You can even get an ethereal during the base defense. Which makes base defense pretty damn hard in the long war. It's actually going to be a little bit easier in beta 14. Alright, let's get started then. I don't think I want to move in just yet. I want to scout the area outside of the UFO. There should be at least one patrol, probably two patrols outside of the UFO. So we want to check this area first and then move in. This might be the room with the sector commanders. But I definitely don't want to trigger that right at the start of the mission that would be a terrible idea that would make all the aliens on this map move towards us that would be a very poor life choice we don't even want to touch the sector commanders until we're mostly done with this entire map so need to be really careful about that they are sometimes outside so it's possible to just trigger the sector commanders when you don't have the intention to, because they are just standing outside. I had that happen before. But either way, we'll scout the area outside first. There's definitely going to be a patrol or two. I can already hear something robotic and mutants. I expect something like 40 aliens in this mission, so there will be a lot of aliens. I don't have a battle scanner, but I'm keeping that for Seekers. I won't be using that just to scout. Can I dash like this? Yeah, it should be fine. Oh, great. I actually triggered something. A full group of Seekers. Okay. That was just outside of Bagel's view. But that's just a group of Seekers. It's not that dangerous. This is actually convenient. We can deal with Seekers without having to fight other aliens at the same time. This is pretty much the best case scenario when it comes to big groups of seekers we don't want to fight those while fighting other aliens and i can maybe kill one more i'm surprised it didn't use stealth but okay overwatch and i could use running gun but there's no point i don't think so i'll just dash like so and maybe we can kill this one 83 percent not bad missed Oh well. Bagels does really good damage with his weapon, but only when he actually hits. Kostya. He can probably target that. Yes, he can. So that's a kill. Rip. Alright, we got like four more seekers. So let's use Overwatch. I am not going to stand in the open because they can still sometimes shoot you. 
instead of choking you to death. So there's no point taking unnecessary damage when we don't have to. And I'm not going to rush melt containers in this mission. We only get free melt from melt containers anyway. And it's much more important to actually finish this mission without losing anyone than to get six extra melt or whatever. So melt containers are not a priority at all. Unless we can totally get them on the way without doing anything special. Alright, there are more secrets still. I'm not going to throw the battle scanner. I'll just wait on Overwatch. That will slow things down a bit, but I don't mind. I got time. So, move up a little bit more. Hariri will stay back here. I want to move Sam a bit. But keep him in cover still. Okay, Overwatch. Come on, don't be shy. There we go. That's a huge seeker right there. It should go down. Unless we miss with bagels. Yep. It looked like he should have hit, but he didn't. Well, we did more than enough damage to finish it off. But that's a lot of hit points on that seeker. Yep. That's 22 hit points. That's a lot. Come on. Yep, more seekers incoming. But we got some more reaction shots. Nice. He's down. Come on. Another seeker. Yeah, this is exactly why I prefer to fight big groups of seekers. Without fighting other aliens at the same time. And this is exactly the reason why I brought a battle scanner. If we triggered a group like this. While fighting other aliens. I would have to use the battle scanner to kill some. Because we got three soldiers. That are completely eliminated from this fight right now. So that would be a problem if we had other aliens at the same exact time. Okay, well, that wasn't a kill. But this should be only 61%, 91%. There we go. This isn't going to be hard, but yeah. Groups like this are very dangerous. Rapid fire on that big seeker. I don't want it to stealth again, definitely not. Rip. Okay, one more seeker left. We'll take care of that. Come on, bagels. Can you hit anything? Nope, apparently not. He didn't hit a single shot yet. He's actually fairly close to his final promotion. He's like 400 experience away or something like that. Alright, we took one point of damage, but that's not really a problem. Reload. There might be one more Seeker, but I'm not sure. Overwatch. Reload. Right, Overwatch. Yeah, there is one more Seeker, I think. Or maybe not. I can hear multiple robotic enemies. So that might be unpleasant. Hopefully Mectoids, not Sectopods. Okay, there's melt that way, but we're not going there, as I already said. We need to reload everything. Let's not trigger any groups while we're reloading. That would be a terrible idea. So reload. And overwatch on anyone who doesn't need to reload. Reload. And Hariri, he can stay somewhere back here. And your steady weapon. There we go. Okay. I'm not going to use the medkit to heal one hit point. Because we might need the medkits for other things. This will be a long mission and I expect around 40 aliens. So we will probably take some damage. That's to be expected. Come on. I'll just scout this entire area. Before I go into the UFO itself. I expect at least one or two groups outside of the UFO. This might take a while, but this is the safer way to do it. I'm not going to do anything crazy. There's not a lot of cover out here, which I don't like too much. We we'll just have to be careful with our movement. This is our Gatling Pulser Gunner. She can stay out here. And Kostia can probably dash forward. 
Now I should kill Kosia, I think. He's two hit points down. I really don't want to waste my medkits though, when I might need them for more serious damage. At the same time, I can't afford to lose Kostya. He does have resilience, but there are aliens that can do 11 damage, don't crit. Any weapon. I think I'll heal him. But for now, Overwatch. We might actually find the Sector Commander pod, because sometimes it's outside of the UFO, or outside of the actual control room. Well, we'll find out. I would prefer to not find the Sector Commanders. Not when we only killed one group of aliens so far. Okay, I suppose I can move up here. I should check this room, but it might have the Sector Commander group. So no, I'm not going to. Right, I can't move, move into cover and still be able to move. I'll just leave them in the open, but behind bagels. To make sure you won't trigger anything. So like this. I'm still a little bit undecided whether to heal Kostya or not. I know I should. Hariri also took one point of damage, but he should be fine. He should be staying in the back. One more person. Well, she can't overwatch, so I guess she can move twice. Yep, there's something this way. That's the closest group. So that means we should see something in the next two turns easily. That sounded like sectoids. Which means it might be a mechtoid with a few sector friends, not the sector commanders. Okay, nothing yet. I'm not going to move again. I'll just spread out and use some cover. I need to position Harini. He needs some kind of permanent position for the next few turns. So this looks reasonable enough. And Anaya can stay here. Or Anania, whatever her name is. Okay. I'm still not sure about Kostya. <laughs> right, whatever, let's kill him. That's 13 hit points. 13 and 11 hit points with resilience is actually a huge difference. Because with 13 hit points, there are no aliens in this mission that could possibly kill him in one hit. Not when he has resilience and is immune to critical hits. Possibly a sectopod, but I don't expect to see a sectopod here. We might have a sectopod, but I hope not. There are robotic enemies, but hopefully that's mechtoids. Did I hear a force field open? I thought I did for a moment. Okay, well, we'll find out. I think the melt container is on the left right here, but I'm not going for it. I think it's right here. Because that's where it usually is on this map. But yeah, I'm not going there. I'm exploring the area outside first. Still no aliens though, which makes me a little bit nervous actually. Okay, so let's spread out a bit more. You can go here. This is actually too far away, probably. She has squad side, but limited squad side. Not like Harini. Move up and overwatch. I don't like not getting any aliens this long on a mission like this, because that can potentially mean multiple groups on top of each other. If the alien groups are not very spread out, it means they are all in one general area. And that usually ends poorly. I hope we'll see something soon. The closest group seems to be this way. And it looks like it's inside the UFO. Alright, beggars can scout ahead a bit. Okay, still nothing. Right. Yeah, I think there are multiple groups in this area, inside the UFO. Which I don't like too much. I could just chill outside for a few turns and wait for some patrol to run into me. 
That's not the most exciting tactic in the history of everything. But it would be a fairly safe strategy in this case. So I might do it. Anyway, Overwatch and Hariri will move here actually. That might give him slightly better line of sight. Steady weapon. And I left one more person behind. No, I don't want to move there. Silly Girard. I wanted to move Sam. But not too much. There might be some group right here. Just outside of my view. And I kind of expect that. I don't think there's a group inside this room. Probably not, actually. So I could open that and make sure. But if there was a group in here, I would get an indication earlier. So I'm pretty sure there isn't. When the closest group seems to be here. Yeah, this is empty. Okay, whatever. Let's move on then. So, bagels. No, I don't want to go there. Well, we already did. Overwatch. I'm hoping some kind of patrol runs into me. I really don't want to trigger like three groups at once. And this is a very real possibility. When we still didn't see anything. Well, just that group of Seekers. I'm glad I got rid of these Seekers. They would be problematic. Alright, back you go. On your order. This is a decent position for her. So, bagels, let's take a look inside. I'm not moving too far. Okay, nothing still. How's our positioning? Not amazing. There's not a lot of cover around here. This counts as cover. So we can use that. I can use bagels as cover. Potentially. But I'm not going to do that unless I really have to. Because if you use that ability, you can't take a shot on that turn. So it can be nice, but you give up some firepower for it. Come on now, are we going to get some aliens or what? This is actually really annoying now. Oh, there we go, finally. That's just a full group of sectoids, really? Okay. That's a little bit weird. But I guess I don't mind. I'm going to run towards my squad. That was strange, a full group of sectoids? Not that I mind, I really don't. We'll deal with them then. But now we need to reposition everyone. Doesn't look like there are any patrols outside. Not in this area at least. Unless there's still one ahead of us. But I don't think so. So, Girard. He can move up here and then use Overwatch. So that's what we'll do. What about Sam? I could move here, but that's not very safe. Not really. Yeah, let's not dash. I'll just move like this. There might be a group on the left side. I don't want to trigger anything. Overwatch. Gunner. Well, I can't really move her anywhere useful. We'll have to be like this. Assault. Now she can dash up here. And Kostya. He can also dash up here. That should be fine. I'm pretty sure the sectoids won't be able to see him. Not on their next turn. Yeah, he's behind the wall. They won't be able to see him. Kind of weird that that group didn't have a mectoid with it or something like that. Now, I'm still a little bit paranoid about this corner. Because when I move Sam, he might trigger something. Okay, here's the first sectoid. They don't even have a sector commander. But the flanking shot we can get is just way too tempting. There we go, nice. That's a lot of flanking shots. There's no Sector Commander, right? No, I'm just making sure. 
That's just a regular sector. 80% chance to crit. If we get a crit, that should be a kill. Yep, nice one. Okay, one down. Can we kill anything else? We probably can. If I move... This won't be a flanking shot. But it should be safe enough. And we won't even trigger Overwatch, so that's nice. 58, 58... I could use Overwatch myself because they will almost definitely move because Sam is flanking them. However, that will lower my chance to hit, obviously, but it still makes sense because they will lose cover. Okay, let's use Overwatch on Bagels. Now, can we do anything else? I can move closer with Girard. So like this. He will have full cover. And they won't even see him. I can do the same with my assault. And then maybe use run and gun on the next turn. And Kostya... In case they decide to move towards us. So Overwatch from this position. And Sen... Probably up here. That seems reasonable enough. She won't really be able to shoot anything from up there, but... She can't move and shoot anyway. And our scout will move up here. Oh, right. We still got Hariri, too. And he's too far away to be useful on the next turn, unfortunately. I'll just keep him down here, in case we get some extra group. So now the sectoids will almost definitely move. But I'm flanking them, and I got them on Overwatch at the same time. So the AI is confused about life. Aliens usually move if you're flanking them. That's a good way to force aliens to move. Flank them and they will almost always move to get out of the flank. Well, we missed, but it was worth a try. They are running away, at least that one is. Okay, this one is moving towards us. I don't mind. Yep. Okay, that's actually good. They will try to do what? Oh. He used Mind Fray on Bagels. That's fairly annoying, but whatever. That's only minus 25% aim, I believe. And we can flank them on the next turn with Bagels. I could actually use the Flamethrower, but that's a bit of a waste. Of the flamethrower. Oh, I can't actually flank them, right? Because Mind Fray is also reduced movement. No, we can flank this one. He might hit us, but that's fine. No, he won't. We can probably kill this sector down here. Yeah, 94%, even though we have minus 25% from Mind Fray. Rip. 17 critical, not bad. So, can Sam see anything from up here? No. Not anymore, at least. Okay, what if we move? Now he can, 72%, that's decent. Nice. 6 damage. Now, do I want to use running gun? Maybe, maybe not. There's not much more I can do on this turn, actually. Yep. I can move Anania, but she can't shoot on this turn because she's using the Gatling Pulsar. She can only do it on the next turn, maybe. I can try to take a shot with Girard. But no, he won't have line of sight from here. Oh, he actually does. Oh, there's a sector back there, right, and we're flanking it. Awesome. Oh, and that was the mind merging sector. Well, that's two kills in one. And now I can use running gun. To kill this one. I could actually shoot it in the face. Yep, let's do it. Watch us triggered something now. <laughs> that will be bad. Oh, we actually did. What's that? I'm not sure what that is. Thin men? Okay. I think that was a group of thin men. So we did actually trigger something. Oh. Berserkers. We'll kill this. This was a slightly risky move in hindsight. We got some Berserkers incoming, okay. This might be interesting. 
I'm not close enough to throw a chem grenade on this turn, but I need to reposition myself based on the Berserkers. Definitely need to do that. I do have Kite in plating on my assault, so she is taking reduced melee damage. And I don't think the Berserkers are close enough to hit her more than once anyway. But we definitely need to reposition completely. Yeah, we need to take care of these Berserkers on the next turn. I do have two chem grenades, so it should be fine. Okay. So that group was what? Three Berserkers and some Thin Men, and what's this? I have no idea what happened there. Was that a different group? So Clones Command Specialist. This seems to be the squad leader. Six damage reduction, that's pretty harsh. He might hit us once. I think he will, or will he? Yep, he will hit us, but we have Kite in plating, we're fine. Just don't panic, that's the important part. Her will is not very high. Close combat specialist again. Nice, 8 damage this time. Yeah, this first Berserker was definitely a squad leader. 4 Berserkers total. And more close combat specialist. We'll be totally out of ammo, but we got some really nice hits for free. Kind of for free, I suppose. We did get hit in the face. The only problem is that the Berserkers will split up now. Because they can't move through here. So I won't be able to hit all of them with one chem grenade. I could kill these two and hit the other two with a chem grenade or other way around. How many hit points do we have? 8 hit points. So we're fine. Would be worse without kiting plating though. We do have kiting plating. So it reduces incoming melee damage by 40%. This is huge against Berserkers. Anyway, how exactly do we want to do this? Not much point using a flamethrower because Berserkers can't panic. I will not be doing that. I don't have Mind Fray. Yeah, what's the chance to hit with Mind Fray? Oh, only 20%. Never mind. Who has the chem grenades? That's our scout with chem grenades. So, do I use chem grenades on these guys or on these guys? Probably on these guys. Because I can take two shots with bagels. I can take a shot with my gunner. I can do much more damage to these two, even though they have more total hit points. Alright, but... Holo targeting? Can I even get holo targeting up? Yes, I can with Kostya. I assume I'm going to kill them both, so I'll move closer. 24%, okay. I need at least one good hit here. Nice, 10 damage. And the second one missed, oh well. That's fine. This would be a kill if the second shot didn't miss. But we are still fine. Do I have any ammo left on the assault? No. I can still use the pistol if I want to, but I don't think that will be necessary. 90%, that's much better. Awesome, that's a kill. Can we get holo targeting on the other Milton? No, I don't think so. If I don't use the chem grenades, but I kind of want to use the chem grenades. Yep, I do. Let's see, Harili can take a shot at the Berserkers, but that doesn't really make any sense. I don't want them to move towards me. Sam can still do something. Oh, Sam can actually hit that Berserker. Which is not a terrible idea, but it might move out of line of sight of my other soldiers. I could lure that Berserker towards this group. But I don't think it will move close enough for me to use a chem grenade to hit all three. Let's try anyway. Okay, 8 damage. How far is it going to move? No, I don't think I'll be able to hit all three. If I shoot it one more time, but that's a little bit too risky. Yeah, that's way too risky. I can almost hit all three. I can hit all three with a flashbang grenade. Okay, that definitely makes sense. Let's do that. Flashbang grenade and chem grenade at the same time. That will reduce the movement of these two berserkers to almost nothing. I can still take a shot with my gunner. This berserker kind of needs to die, preferably. I'm not 100% sure if I have enough damage to kill it. 
I might not. Which means it's safer to not hit it at all. Hmm. Well, actually, with the disorient effect, I think I can hit it and be safe. But I can also just use Overwatch to play it safe. I prefer to play it safe. Let's use that chem grenade, but first we need to move Girard out of the way. I wouldn't want to poison my own soldier. That would be a little bit silly. I could probably move like this and use Overwatch. But... I'd rather play it safe and move as far as possible. I wouldn't want Berserker to hit Girard in the face because he would just die if that happened. He doesn't have enough hit points to take it. So now we'll use the chem grenade. I definitely can't hit all three with the chem grenade, but that's fine. I only need to hit these two. So there we go, now they are poisoned. And I can probably take a shot with Hariri. I can, 93% and precision shot, let's take a shot. That should be really good damage. 8 damage. I was hoping for a crit. Oh, he panicked. Yeah, his well is not very good. But these berserkers can barely move with both acid and disorient on them. Now, can we kill this one? That's the question. Maybe? No, I don't think I can kill that one. Right. Overwatch. It's not close enough to hit anyone, so I'm just playing it safe. Oh. What's that? That's a mechtoid. Okay, that's fairly annoying. Because now I'll need to reposition. At least we killed the sectoid. But I needed that reaction shot against the berserker. I think we'll have to move in to break line of sight for that mechtoid. Well, first we need to take care of the Berserkers, there's no question about that. That shouldn't be a problem. Not anymore. But that Mectoid was kind of inconvenient. Regenerated. Yeah, we don't have enough firepower. Hariri is panicking, which is really annoying. Fortunately, he has cover. Would be much worse if he didn't. He only has 7 hit points. So there's that, too. Okay, let's finish it then. Only 67%. We need holo targeting. I need to keep Kostya down here, I think. Yep, we need to kill this big berserker first. This one is not poisoned. Okay, nice. 11 damage. But that's a lot of hit points on that berserker. Like, seriously? That's just nasty. 100%. I like these odds. Nice. Okay, this should be fairly easy now. But I might want to move with my gunner. Otherwise the mechtoid will probably be able to flank her. I can move and then hunker down here. And then maybe actually hit the mechtoid. Okay, hunker down. Still need to kill that berserker. Girard can move in and hit it. Or I could throw a smoke grenade. I'm considering using a smoke grenade. Because that mechtoid is coming. I still got one more shot on bagels. I can also do that. Hmm. I need to move with Girard. That's kind of obvious. So let's move him in. He has to do this anyway. Regardless of what's next. I'll just take a shot with bagels. That's a guaranteed kill. Bit of an overkill. But a guaranteed kill nonetheless. And I'll just run in with my scout and keep bagels up there. I mean, not bagels, Sam. Okay, let's kill that mutant first, just to make sure he's going to die. He's dead. But that was only 6 damage. I'm glad he's dead. And Sam. He could hit one of these berserkers. That actually kind of makes sense. I could actually kill one of these berserkers, so that makes even more sense. No, I can't because I don't have enough ammo anymore. Okay, whatever. Actually, I don't have the laser pistol. But I would need to get a crit. I think I prefer to reload. Or just move. Yes, I'll need to join my squad. So that needs to happen. And I'll throw a smoke grenade. 
Might be a bit of a waste of a smog grenade, but I have two smog grenades. And I don't want that mech to, to hit anyone. This is also combat drugs, so it will give me higher chance to hit on my next turn. As for my assault, I'll use Overwatch. So we can kill the Berserkers on our next turn, but the mech is definitely coming. And the drones, but that's not a problem. Will it have a shield? If that mechtoid comes here without a shield, okay, that shouldn't be a big problem. I do have Hitam on Kostya, and he hit bagels, but only for 4 damage. Not a big deal. 3 hit points on that berserker, and now it will die, hopefully. Yep, he's dead. One more berserker left. And the Mectoid. Yeah, we're pretty much safe here now. Not quite done with this mission though. And close combat specialist. I love that ability. <laughs> it's so awesome in situations like this. If only scatter blaster or shotgun type weapons had more ammo in general. Alright, might as well just get a kill. Rip. Okay, now we need to kill that Mectoid. Shame we don't have hit ammo on Sen. But I'll take that shot anyway. 12 critical. That's almost as good as hit ammo. And Kostya. He does have hit ammo in this case. So he can probably get a kill, actually. I can't move into cover. But if I kill the Mectoid, I won't really need cover. Oh, great. What? Right, he doesn't have enough ammo for rapid fire, but... 13 damage. That's good enough. Now we can get a kill. Some can move and reload. Bagels can get a kill, actually. Bagels is pretty close to Master Sergeant. I don't think he will get Master Sergeant from this mission, but I know he's pretty close. Something like 400 experience away. Rip Mectoid. And the drone will be easy enough to deal with. 35% chance to crit, thanks to combat drugs. Alright, I think there's one more drone or something, but I'm probably too far away to see it. But I'm going to make a cut here and finish this mission in the next part, so if you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a like, and thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.